the bliss of the abyss. Once upon a time in a land far away, a poor farmer and his wife lived all alone. They were very lost. With Robert Newmark Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bliss of the Abyss with your host, Robert Newmark Jones, aka Ruskin Denmark, and of course, my perfect female side, Catalina. That's right. We come in many forms on the Bliss of the Abyss be they human, be they animal, be they rabbit foot, be they liquid, gaseous, solid. And that's why you are, we are a welcoming church. At this festive time of year. What say you, Catalina? Uh, I say we worship Dionysus. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are currently drinking some bubbles. But my re- my thought was just wondering, like, what's your default clue slash Cluedo character? Because mine's Miss Scarlet. Mm, Reverend Green. Got to be Reverend Green. A man of the cloth. Is Mr. Green in Clue? Well, he clearly hasn't got his papers in order yet, then. <laughs> Because in the UK, he's a reverend, and he's very much to be trusted. Uh, we haven't played Clue, of course, this year yet. Um, we're still playing Guess What the Disease Is. Hey! I'll give you a clue. Is it a runny nose? <laughs> <laughs> is he coughing? No, it's... <laughs> Meniscus tear! Hey! And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Yeah, Rob can't walk. No. You t- I mean, like, we already are in Tier 4, which, yeah. have you talked about that yet? I've told people a little bit about Tier 4. Have you talked about it yet? I've talked a wee bit about T4, yeah, okay. I know a bit about T4. So T4 means that you cannot really see another household with, like, very small exceptions. Um, you can see one household outside for, like, a period of, like, 20 minutes or something, unless you live alone or you have a... Child care bubble, right? It's basically lockdown yeah. by any other name. Yeah. Uh, wait, by other, na- other a, name would a smell lockdown, as sweet. Yeah. <laughs> a, a tear by any other name would smell as sweet. <laughs> mm. um, so, yeah, so, so Robert has a torn meniscus, which mm. means that not only can we not see people, but we can't go anywhere. But we do have the night sky. Mm, that was my Christmas gift to you. Bringing some bliss Ooh. towards the abyss. You finally see it, like, all dark. Yeah, it's a projector that has a moon and a Milky Way and some stars. Look, the, the smoke. There's smoke in here. Um. Uh, that's from the incense. So we have tried to create a bit of atmosphere for this Christmas special. It's not Christmas. A New Year's holidays <laughs> special. Yes. Uh, you know, Kwanzaa might still be going on. Can we double check that? Isn't Kwanzaa like the 26th or the 27th of It's Already Done? All the holidays are done. <laughs> um, December 26th to January 1st. It is still Kwanzaa, thank you very much. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa, everybody. Or Merry, whichever you prefer. Maybe both. <laughs> um, yeah. Why not Merry Hanukkah? I mean, it can also be Merry Hanukkah. What about when the Brits say Happy Christmas? Well, other people say Happy Christmas too. Not the Americans. I don't know what you want us to do about it. Okay. They should just both be acceptable. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) How are you doing over there? Um, it's a bit cold. Is it? No, I mean... Is it like this? No. It's a big old cashmere jumper. Yes. Okay. (laughs) No, yes. (laughs) This is the first time we have recorded in studio using two different mics, two boom arms. That's not true. Um, in studio. We've done it downstairs oh, okay. in the like... front room. <laughs> um, this should hopefully be a bit better quality. Uh, so some of the things I'm seeing. So if you don't know much about where Rob films, um, he has a print of David Bowie. He doesn't listen to David Bowie, but it was a leftover print. We could be heroes. <laughs> it's to represent Brixton, aye, aye. Um, and then there's a... Okay, so I, I am... There is a picture of me in here. It's small. And 
<laughs> there's a really large picture of Jan Terry. Uh, yeah. With you're, a love you're, letter. There are four of you, and yet you are still dwarfed by Jan. <laughs> a massive framed photo of her. Um, with, with Oh, ads! But YouTube, I don't want to watch ads. I don't want to watch... Look at that skyline. Rock and roll. <laughs> There's a whole intro to this, huh? No, we had some, they had some time to fill. <laughs> also, they want Jan to really pop. That's what he wrote, uh, she wrote to him on her photo. There she is. Okay, enough. <laughs> Why doesn't she acknowledge the camera? It's just this awkward valet interaction. The matters. Just me, girl. Okay, okay, enough, <laughs> enough. Actually, anyway, I have a signed photo to Rob. I don't want to lose you tonight. Love, Jan Terry. I got that for you. I mean, mm, I don't know. It's mine. <laughs> Hands off. I don't see your letter from Jan. Mm, and I got you a phone call with her. <laughs> a video call, which I will treasure in my heart for always. Mm. I asked questions such as, did you ever lose him tonight? <laughs> what was the deal with the limo? You know, <laughs> classic. Um, anyway, welcome to the holiday edition. Here's a, a Christmas, New Year, Kwanzaa, fill in all the blanks. We're all of the things special episode i know sometimes this time of year especially given covid can be lonely for some mm-hmm. people we really hope that you've managed to spend some of the christmas period with with loved ones be they friends family and that you won't alone the whole day yeah we hope you weren't alone um at least i hope you use some technology to reach out at the very least reach out and touch faith it could be a music special because now i want to hear that song <laughs> um but we thought if you did spend it by yourself mm. um we we were here with you yeah and we thought we'd bring you some cheer so that's what we're here to do so it is the you bliss of the abyss that we also spent it alone <laughs> And we, of course, did spend it alone, although we had Lady Stevie Kits. Yeah. We had our neighbours giving us free wine. Yeah, that was really nice from Portugal, though. From no, Portugal, kidding. well. <laughs> kidding, it was really good. Portuguese wine is great. <laughs> I mean, it was wine, but Portugal? <laughs> totally I mean, kidding, I love Portuguese wine. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Um... Yeah, so we we had a lonelier Christmas than usual. Oh. Oh. No. But we made do, didn't we, dear? Oh, we did, daddy. Oh, we did, daddy. Catch him, daddy. Catch him, daddy. Catch him, daddy. <laughs> daddy. Will you catch him? You Ma, catch you're him. no help at all. <laughs> What's that? Oh, so this Christmas I learned of IT. That theme song was really good. The IT crowd. Yeah. I shall pump it on right now. This like, week how did I miss the IT crowd? You know, you just like blink and you're like, wow, I missed all of James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> like They're still making it. It's never too late. I've missed all of James Bond. <laughs> I'm going to keep it that way. I feel like one of those lame ass people where it'd be like a DJ would sample this and I'd be like, this is so dope, man! Like, wh- if we were able to go out. There is a remix. Favorite bit coming up. I can see why you like that, because that was like what you do in your theme song. Theme song. I'm thinking of changing my theme song to. I don't want to lose you tonight. You'll lose a lot of followers. You're the only thing that made you... <laughs> no, say, don't do Nils like that. <laughs> don't do him like that. <laughs> Nils, baby, I'm sorry. He's so sorry. I'm not that sorry. Um, 
Okay, so like, if you if you were a Georgia peach, go on. <laughs> Wait, you mean one of the Georgia peaches? Yeah, if you were a Georgia peach. Oh, should we just explain to people who the Georgia peaches are? No, no, yeah. <laughs> You're fired! <laughs> get out the door and pour me some champagne before you leave. Oh, we do have champagne. We'll get a nice little sound. Um, but if you were a Georgia peach... You have to explain to the people what that is. Oh, okay. Well, um, there uh, there's like Real Housewives of Insert Place, and it's a reality show, I think, on Bravo TV, um, which consequently also hosts Top Chef. Uh, oh, but, shit. you know, if you had Bravo TV and you paid for it or streamed it, you could watch Housewives of Insert Place. Place and uh, this yeah. one was Housewives of Atlanta, I think. Atlanta, and yeah. they were known as the Georgia Peaches. And mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah, they're very like southern ladies with a lot of money and charm. But um, Rob never watches like uh, reality TV really, but for some reason he was visiting me in New York and the Peaches were on, and he was like, I gotta watch my Peaches! And we watched like the entire season. <laughs> I don't know how many seasons there are. I think they do different ones, but we watched a lot. Uh, in answer to how many, not enough. <laughs> and we also then tried to watch, I think it's called uh, Divas in Dentistry. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is was all about um, the, the wives of dentists. I mean, I accept my strange addiction, but Divas in Dentistry. It was something like that. It was it was just one step too boring for yeah. either of us to manage. And then we couldn't do it anymore, and then we actually went out because we were allowed to do that in those times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, reality TV before COVID. I don't. Uh, you know. I mean, I haven't I haven't been out <laughs> since Tier Four, apart from. That was um, a, a Saturday of last week, so we, this is Monday now, so a week and change ago. So I was out while Tier 4 was announced, but that wasn't Tier 4 in practice yet. And since then, I've had to... I've been housebound. I mean, I've been to the shed. Yeah. Lucky me. And I've been out, like, almost every fucking day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day, mean Tier 4. And yeah. I bring my whip and my cattle, and I go. Um, stop, stop bringing COVID home to the house. <laughs> I do wash my hands. Mm. I have a nice, like, diva mask as well. Has that even been proven, the washing hands thing, or is that just I'd like, like you I'd like to know? think so, just because anything, like placebo, I, I, you know. Yeah. You know what I read the other day? What? Apparently, warts. I hate oh. warts. <laughs> Not sure many people are huge fans. <laughs> uh, are, um, it's better than chance that you can cure a wart by placebo. What? You heard. My dad once told me that he got scratched by a squirrel because he was feeding it like an acorn and he got warts <laughs> afterwards on his hand. Why was your dad feeding a squirrel? We fed squirrels. I have pictures of you feeding a squirrel. It's the best thing ever when these creatures of God... God. God. The <laughs> 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 closest creature to God is a, squir a squirrel. squirrel. I would like to say that the closest creature to God is a jellyfish. <laughs> Kind of like amorphous, you can never really know it. And full of nothing. And what's it made of? And nothing. yet, the answers seem to be, if you could understand the jellyfish, you'd understand the whole universe. I think I'll go with you, except I'm going Portuguese man of war. Which is like hundreds of little organisms in one. Um, yeah, and they have like the shark fin, but they're basically an advanced jellyfish. Yeah, Jelly but they're also like a, a floating death machine. I know. How that's much? <laughs> this sounds like God all the way. Well, that's very Old Testament God. Yeah. I, I was going for You're a bit Jewish. Of the, I know. I was trying to push things forward. <laughs> Let's push things forward. Do you know that jellyfish predate the dinosaurs? Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you very much, Dictionary Fact Corner. Yeah. Wait, what happened to... Uh, Caitlin's culinary corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got, got pushed into my corner too early. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, the that was a bit rude. Are burning. Um, that was very rude. <laughs> okay, fine. Would you like to have just a little sting instead? Hold on. The bliss of the abyss. Um, okay, Caitlin's Culinary Corner. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I don't want you to give a corporate lecture. <laughs> I wanted to talk about um, how... To celebrate, can we pop... Can we pop some champagne? 
Unless you pop. I've lost all my grip strength. Is that a COVID problem? You might have COVID. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, lost, no. I lost my grip strength. You might have COVID. <laughs> you are the first known case of COVID. Wood. <laughs> In the whole of the you damn K. Oh man! If you get hives that just keep coming back, go get tested. I I was <laughs> <laughs> test it. Go test it. Here we go. Here we go. Whoopa! Hey! It's a good smoke. It's a good smoke, that. Okay. Okay. Yes, we're having cover while we are performing. 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 Well, sort of. Oh. <laughs> you see the music video for this? It's the best. We were born to be. Alive, you were born to be alive. 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 <laughs> Cheers to the end of a terrible year and the beginning of a new one. May it be better. May it be better. Although it still might be terrible. <laughs> Little sting in the tail there, just oh, as I'm sipping. Oh, so um, um, I would like to really talk about this. Forget the peaches, forget the culinary corner. I want to talk about substitute bank holidays. Um... I think it's a decent thing when this stuff happens. So today is December 28th, which is a substitute bank holiday for Boxing Day, which is um, the day after Christmas uh, in the UK for anybody who's not from the UK. Correct. Um, so I had to convince my job that this is a, a proper bank holiday off today because it's actually listed as the 12 that you get off. Um, but because Christmas was on a Friday... Boxing Day was on Saturday. They so gave us an extra. They gave us an extra today, so we were off today. Very um, nice. But because of that, because of that, I was looking up 2021 bank holidays. How are we doing? 2022 bank holidays. I okay. think we're getting an extra one, aren't we? Yeah! So, 2021, yeah, fuck it. It's going to be the same. Um, Christmas is going to fall on a Saturday, so actually the substitute Christmas bank holiday, I think it's going to be on a Tuesday. It's wild. Um, but 2022, there's a new oh. holiday in town, the Platinum Jubilee. In June as well. Yeah. Okay, best time of year for a public holiday. Why are we getting this? The 22nd of June to mark Her Majesty's the Queen Platinum Jubilee. Jubilee. How long's Platinum? Is that 75 years on the fucking throne? Oh, is that older than Victoria then? Because Victoria was a long range. Oh, long she's, range. she's already beaten Victoria. Lizzie won't die. That's good. She Stay around. <laughs> no, she absolutely will not. <laughs> Stay around. Uh, it's 70. 70. 70, 70 years, years. On the throne. We were like watching um, The Ripper on Netflix and we were looking at like um, one of the prime ministers who like was around before I was born and I was like, was Lizzie like reigning then? And Rob's like, yup. Okay, they haven't told us the actual date, but it, it will be June third. I thought it says it. Oh, here we go on a Friday. Yeah, the best bank holiday ever. Who wants a Monday? We all want Fridays. Oh my God, no way! Even better than that, the May bank holiday will be moved to Thursday. Oh, so we'll also have Friday off. Yeah, see, so 2022 is fucking where it's at. And they know it because they know, they, they say that COVID's still going to, like, wreak havoc on this country until, like, Easter. Hey, who's they? Uh, Bojo. Yeah, badnews.net. Not where I read my internet news. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been reading nothing but positivity. My Georgia peaches. Yeah, the peaches. Oh, my point was, if you're from Georgia... Corner so Culinary Caitlin. Um, imagine if you're like from a different place. So, like, imagine okay. Rob that you were a Georgia peach. What's my name? Um, Cecilia. Oh, Cecilia, you're, you're breaking, breaking my heart. heart. <laughs> okay, I'm Cecilia. Yeah. What do I like? 
Well, that's my my question to you. Is like if you're from London and you like fry ups and roast chicken dinners and like uh, fish and chips and stuff, um, but if you Born were to from be alive. if you were from Georgia, what do you think your favorite food would be inherently? Or if you were from Russia, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say peach cobbler because mm. you, they sure do know how to cook up a good pie. What about if you were from uh, uh, Moscow, uh, borscht, blini. Blin is simple. It is but pancake. <laughs> Borst requires skill in kitchen. Vodka strong like bear. Vodka strong like bear. No vodka in borscht. Vodka alongside borscht many. But it's cold. Sometimes it's cold, yes. It's always cold. <laughs> Nothing wrong with cold. Cold soup. Cold soup, cold heart, live long. We are lucky with cold soup. Mm. Wim Hof. What about him? Mm. That's it? That's all? That was uh, your talking point? Rob made point? me do Wim Hof the other day and I was having like a really bad psoriasis outbreak because I was kind of naughty and had some like gluten, which I'm not really allowed to have. And he was quite insistent that we sat down and do the Wim Hof method, which is a series of deep inhalations. And then um, you kind of get into a flow state um, and soon on your exhale, you can not breathe for a while. Anyway, my psoriasis cleared, and um, that was interesting because it's supposed to regulate your circulatory system. Yes, well, it fights your autonomic nervous response as well. Um, yeah, I would just say I am not a uh, professional scientist. I'm not the guy to consult for the Wim Hof actual studies, yeah. but I would say that uh, if you are interested in these kinds of things, go and check it out yourself because it's amazing, the, the kind of things that he's... He's made happen the, the the amount of science that's changed because of just him. Pretty amazing. Uh, what happened? You got distracted by your phone. I was reading a forum and like all these girls were coming in. Like I, I but I'm on these travel forums and um, a lot of them were saying they're like, I have a runny nose. Is it COVID? And like a lot of people were like, Well, no, that's not the main COVID symptom. And actually, a lot of people responded with, I only had a runny nose and it was COVID. And it's just like. <laughs> Everything is COVID, basically. COVID, 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 I don't know. Uh, so what next? What do you have prepared? Come on. Uh, well, me? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, we didn't really get Caitlin's Culinary Corner, did we? I was going to say that we have uh, binge watched within the last month or two, um... Quite a few seasons of Top Chef. <laughs> My mind is starting to melt. It was good having the the few breaks from it, you know, watching <laughs> Soul because uh, we're a member of Disney Plus. I would <laughs> I would highly recommend everyone join Disney Plus, if not just to see the latest Pixar movie, Soul, which is excellent. It made me cry loads. But other than that, what have we watched? A bit of football, the IT crowd, as mm -hmm. has been mentioned, and Top Chef. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Top Chef. <laughs> Today's quick fire challenge will be completed by someone else. So I'll be in the pantry having a nap. <laughs> That's Padma Lakshmi, the most gorgeous. Uh... Ah, Padma. Ah, Padma. She's, She's a jewel. She's a jewel upon jewels, and so is Gail. Um, a younger Padma could play Princess Jasmine. Yes, absolutely. She looks stunning. She could play any princess. She no, was. Maybe or not. Yeah, Padma. Who, who would be Aladdin? The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like he don't look like a street rat. <laughs> He's like, buff as fuck. Um, but we watched. Uh, we're on season ten. But we have not watched the first season. But we watched every other season, and we have been binge watching it. And it has definitely affected how we behave it's affected what we cook why we cook it what we've bought for christmas you know, top chef's taken over like we got new global knives um which was a recommendation from anthony bourdain um we have all these beautiful knives uh, i got a new pizza cutter thank you elisa um we've gotten oil infusers to make scallion oil we got a new mandolin yeah we've retired <laughs> There's nowhere else to go. Might as well. You know, yeah, like the rest of the world. Yeah, we've been forced to take an early retirement. <laughs> so we've developed those kinds of interests. I just wonder though, because, like, obviously, um, 
we have binge watched like we are becoming top chef like yes chef and all these things um <laughs> it's just like what does that say about us right that we've improved or trying to improve our kitchen game because there's nothing else to do but like what about people who are like binge watching breaking bad you mean just for entertainment or because they're trying to learn how to make how to make meth i would say if you do want to learn how to make meth Breaking Bad, that's not your number one source. It might be fun, but there'll probably be some in-depth instructional videos. And the internet, the dark web. The dark web the will dark have them. Web. Let's not do that now for fear of my computer exploding. <laughs> Although my Bitcoin is up. Bitcoin's up! Bitcoin's up, baby. At least it was yesterday. It could have plunged. I have no investments. Well, I invested at the peak of last time, as like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with £250. That reduced to the all-time low to, like, £30. Oh, God, that's so low. You lost so much money. But I've just kept it in there since, and it's now up to 350 Hey! An investment worth billions. Well, I don't have any stocks, so, you know, no investments over here. Would you like some Bitcoin? No. Um, one of the other things we're watching is, um, so... You know, like we've uh Yes chef. Yeah, chef. You know, this is still top chef related, but um uh with John Ronson's book about uh being cancelled. Uh, John Ronson's book. Uh, so you've been publicly shamed. So you've shamed. been publicly shamed, yeah. yeah. During um, my Tom Kalikia review of it. It was good. It was good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um but it made me think because uh we watched an episode season ten where Pee Wee Herman came on and was a judge. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, that guy, he got arrested for masturbating in a movie theater. And for getting his peewee out. Yeah, <laughs> getting his peewee Sorry. Herman out. Um, and Rob was like, I don't know. And then I was like, yeah. And I looked it up and, yeah, the, the actor was, you know, and it, it just made me think of that book because it's like I've reduced him to that. And I realized that those things kind of like follow you. They say all well, publicity is good publicity. You can't help but think some publicity is not good publicity. Because, like, I, I felt like, you know, I feel bad that I did that. I was like, oh, yeah, this actor who's done all these right. things, I just remember All that you he... remember is his yeah. once getting his dick out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. To be fair, if you get your dick out, you are running the risk of always being remembered as the yeah. guy who got the dick out. But I think that that used to be a thing, you know, like... Getting your dick out. <laughs> getting your dick out. <laughs> I've no, heard it's coming back. Like, 42nd Street and stuff used to be, like, um, like sexy movies where people would go and masturbate and stuff. So yeah, I, the blue cinemas. Yeah, movie yeah, 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 houses. that is, like, normal. That is a normal thing to wank off. Yeah. Wank <laughs> off, jack off. You <laughs> jack off. They all work. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, fuck is that? Just guess <laughs> any of those. They're all fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What the fuck is that? It did make me think. I was like, oh, that's sad that I'm thinking all these things. Why? That they're getting rid of the Jack of Cinema? <laughs> no. <laughs> Imagine working there, having to clean it up. Oh! It's a good thing. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. Um, I think that American people have gotten their second stimulus bill. And checked I things. believe they had. Trump finally signed it. They're getting 600 bucks. Smackaroonies. Six hundred smackery. I mean, like I, I should be able to claim this stuff, but yeah, I mean, I guess so, right? You might have to pay tax. Mm. Uh, moving on. I'm an American living in London. Uh, I'm an alien. I'm, I'm an illegal alien. alien. I'm, legal. I'm a New Yorker <laughs> in London. London. Yeah. Oh. oh. Can you do it? Probably high. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, but do the. What, what is it again? <clears throat> oh, you know. Oh, no, I don't remember. Okay, I'm on. an alien. I'm a legal alien. Oh, no. No, it's... Oh! <laughs> That's not I bad. I think that was quite close, but... <laughs> you take coffee, I take you money. Why is he using a cane? Whoa! You got it! 
There's a very uh, funny Ricky Gervais podcast where uh, his producer Carl miss his um, legal as little. <laughs> I'm an alien. I'm a little alien. Oh, I'm bis the of uh, the. Bl- no. <laughs> yeah. So like Rob had like uh, he's he's doing straight my teeth dot com. Straight my teeth. He's gonna get some teeth and he's gonna model. Okay. Um, so he's straightening his teeth. I want to be the next Padma. <laughs> um, and and the, he had to like submit prints. It's like Invisalign, basically. And he had to submit prints or something to get his teeth evaluated. Is that true? Yeah. And then they were like, okay, we have you scheduled for the 25th of December. For a video conference. <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> How's 25th of December at 3 p.m.? Um... How is it for you? <laughs> like, do you want to do this as much as me? Because I really don't. And they replied being like, too. what about the 26th? Has anyone else used something in their adulthood that you wish you did sooner? Mm. So the obvious one for me is orthodontics. Yeah, but not... It's crowding only, in the lower... Just lower. You can't really see it unless you, like, fully smile, which not everybody does that. Usually people smile and only show their front, like, top teeth. You're telling me I'm smiling like a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Darling, not everyone smiles that way. <laughs> You're scaring the neighbours. Why don't you go first and I'll see if I can think of another. Uh, so so self, self-improvement things, right? That you wish you'd have done as a, a child or a teen. Oh, this is going to sound so stupid, but um, because I have, uh, I'm prone to psoriasis, like I have kind of stayed away from a facial moisturiser because it feels either burns or it doesn't feel right. And I finally like took some time like an adult to look up one that would be like quite soft for my face and not oily and mm. all of that and, and that sounds so simple but I think the little tweaks like that um it's the same as like people saying well why don't you sunscreen forever because apparently that'll like come back t- to haunt you later but I mm. still haven't learned that lesson really mm. um but yeah I, I recently got like a userin like face mm. thing and I feel more like like I'm 30 because of that <laughs> Mm. Like I'm actually taking In both care a of positive things. and a negative. Yeah, yeah, because I'm actually like mm. forcing myself to take care of certain things that I should have been doing for ages. It's mm. just that, like, when you have a skin condition, that can take like an hour to to get everything in line and do all the proper treatments and stuff. And mm. I, I just don't want to put that much time towards taking care of myself. I just never have been like that. But now you're prioritizing, and it feels good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like. It, still frustrating because like you just kind of want to get a I don't know I've always been the type of person who's like yeah I like spending time in a bath but I like don't really want to spend more than a half hour getting ready for anything or getting ready to go to bed or any of that like I don't want to spend a long time having to prep everything what would you say your happiest slight slide bar uh slide bar spending the most time prepping for oh um like your wedding actually well, yeah, that was great. That was easy as well. Like for the wedding, it was really easy to. Um, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> Listeners, if you could see my face right now, because it's not. E- we made it look easy. Yeah, I meant. Uh, oh, I meant um, like uh, three weeks before. You and I were eating very clean. We were fasting. We weren't drinking. That was easy because we had a countdown to like the day that we wanted to like. We had a deadline. Look our best, and yeah. it, and, it, and actually we kept that up when we thought we were going to go on our honeymoon in Indonesia. Um, but because there's been no deadline, it's not that easy to want to keep up good habits. Um, like we we go through bursts of wanting to keep good habits, but there's nothing to work towards. Mm. Um, and, and some people will disagree. They're like, well, you know, anything can come up in 2021. But it's like, no, but I don't know if we're going to Amsterdam no, in 2021. I don't me. know where we're going, you know? Like, so it's, I like having things to work towards with like a, 
Um, yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, so I don't, like, yeah, of course I could just pick an arbitrary date in, like, March and be like, I want to look my best for this date. But, like, do I? If we can't go anywhere, um, it's not as much of an incentive. It is, I agree. Yeah. I uh, I saw an article that I, had, I haven't read. Yeah. I was saving for you. Oh. I'm guessing. I'm guessing what your reaction might be. Would you like to read it out loud okay, yeah. in whatever way you want uh, on the podcast? This was on the 25th of December 2020 on BBC News. Okay. Despite COVID, where 2020 was the best year of my life. Because you've grown and you've learned things and you overcome things. You're so resilient and beautiful. That's not what it says. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, though. It was very on brand. <laughs> For many, 2020 has been a, a year to forget. With a, with a global pandemic, multiple lockdowns and a devastating and devastating job losses. Wales is now in its third lockdown of the year. After months of COVID restrictions and disruption to travel, business and seeing loved ones. Despite this, for some it has been a year of change and one to remember. We heard that from people across Wales. Why do we care about Wales? Why this year has been good for them against all the odds. The best year of my life. Adapting to life with a newborn is no easy task, but for Fiona... Blah, 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 blah. That's because they get to spend more time with their newborn, of course. Yeah, in January I gave birth to my daughter and I've spent this year watching her Okay, grow. are they all just people who've given birth? Let's just see. <laughs> it's just a list of people being like, I gave birth. It okay, was great. another person. Focusing on the bees in me. This is something you would do when you have spare time. So this is just... On the what? Bees. It's a beekeeper. Katie Hayward, who runs like Feeling... Like a baby. Uh, yeah, Honey Bees, Honey Farm and Education Centre in Anglesey. Uh, so 2020 has helped her reprioritize and focus on things that matter, including business and family. Um, okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> She didn't get much of a um, chance. No, I don't miss out on bedtime stories. When Wales went into lockdown in March, Cardiff barrister Anchorit Price began shielding due to severe asthma. However, Miss Price said changing to working from home made a massive difference to her family life compared to long hours in the office. I agree with that. I love working remotely and from home. Yeah. I'm lucky I'm employed, but I worked long long days, so getting home for bedtime was always such a struggle. Like, these are good things. I get it. It's, it's, it's great. Fitter than I've been in years. After 30 years in Australia, Nicola Squires returned to Wales in February this year, where she found lockdown put a stop to normality and getting her new life together. But she said 10 months on, she's keeping positive. Now I have my own transport. I'm fitter than I've been in years. And the cherry on top, I now have a job. Which has nothing to do with her being fit. Sorry. That's it. God. That was it. Fucking hell. That's not that. Like, these are, these, these are, are like, go, these are like easy. Like, it's low hanging fruit, though. <laughs> this is fruit that's hanging so low, I've accidentally kicked it. Yeah, it's rotting. <laughs> we all have that. Everyone's working remotely <laughs> if you can work. And, and like, everyone gets a bit more time with their partners and stuff. Like, people have been home. But actually, for some people, that that's resulted in divorces and breakups and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, for me, that's exactly the same. It's like, it's resulting in a divorce. So. <laughs> for me, it's, I know I know which way it's going. For me, that's exactly the same as the article you shared month ago, months ago, which was, like, why COVID ruined my 20s. Oh, yeah. This oh is God. exactly the same bullshit, mm-hmm. just the other way round. Mm-hmm. It's like, can we all stop fucking pulling the wool over our eyes and going, la, 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 isn't it great? Yeah, it's not. It's just shit. Um, it is really good to... Okay, so, like... I actually was saying this before the pandemic hit that I, like, if my job didn't want to do more remote working, I wanted to have a job that did remote working because I thought my my balance of life is better not spending 80% of my life in an office. Like, and then 10% yeah. commuting. Yeah. Like, it, it was really clear to me um, that when I had time to work at home, I worked just as productively. Um, personally, not everybody's like that, but I worked really productively and it was like, and I'm with my cat and I have more time to wash dishes if I want to while also getting all the tasks done. And if I work late, I'm not getting home later because I'm already home. So it doesn't matter if I'm working a bit later. In fact, Mm. the office gets earlier time and later time for me Mm. because there's no commute time. Mm. So that time 
can be put towards the job and then afterwards I can close the computer I'm home um so I'm less stressed so like and I think that is a positive shift um for COVID. and you think that's gonna stay in the new world I think a lot of offices are probably gone and I don't know like is it being bankrupt or something but I think a lot of them are probably shutting down because I'm guessing landlords are gonna have to lower their rents rates are gonna have to go down by the government everything's just gonna have to chill out a bit yeah like I think because people aren't gonna want to be in central London as much for as that, much for that stuff I do no think way. my team might want it like a, like maybe once a week type of thing when things like kind of you know to get people because I do yeah, think there's sure, value sure. in like coming and talking with your teammates sure. and stuff and I do agree with that, but I just, I remember what it was like to, to do the, like the slog in every day. Um, and, yeah, the, and then something the goes wrong, like the tube breaks down and actually London tubes are pretty sufficient, efficient. Right. They're was, really great. I was speaking to my friend Arthur on last week's episode and he was, he, he you know, he uses the LA metro system. Oh yeah. Subway. He doesn't, he doesn't drive. No. It's interesting. Uh, which so it's pretty rare out there, and he was like, oh, "Trains take like six minutes." Yeah, whereas the tube takes like one to two minutes if it's like, and yeah. then and then if it's six minutes, people get really freaked out. I don't know anymore, but that used to be the commuting culture, and like, yeah, we don't have to do that anymore, thank God. And so, so you know, you'd have this commute every day, and and then you know you have more incentives to. Um, get up and and want to take some breaks and stuff whereas i think when you're working from home like you you it's a bit more lax um but if you work like if you work well it's perfect i like that it's a bit lax i i don't like that I, you know like i just think it's better and i think a lot of people have realized that during covid mm. and companies have realized that and in fact actually i think the reason why bigger companies like i think what was it twitter Twitter announced they were going to go all remotely, like, you know, they'll have some offices, but it's because it saves them money. People are working just as well. In fact, probably would work better, you know, when things come back up. It's it's nice to be able to, you know, be with your cat all day. Yeah. The trick is bringing back all the other stuff that brings human beings together. You know, all the other reasons we gather. Yeah. You know, uh parties births deaths marriages oh my god like do you, uh, yeah concerts shows what do you think stadiums like, so there are people i'm not naming anybody we know lots of people who have broken tier four right um even casually but they've kind of like kind of covered up they've broken it and stuff. Cindy. sorry what <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually. um he didn't but um and I saw in these travel groups that I'm in and stuff, like people like, like, hey girls, do you have, what are your New Year's plans and stuff? And that's coming up. And, and I'm just like. And are people like publicly responding or? Yeah. So you get a bunch of people like, don't shame people. And other people are like, uh, we're doing this, this and that, you know, like, so like. What's this, this and that? I don't know. I haven't fully like, for Christmas, a lot of people said, I'm still going to see my family. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, that's, that's inevitable. There's only so much you can... But in terms of, like, positives, uh, yeah. working yes. remotely has been good. Um, if you had a baby, stay. you're fucking lucky, in a way. In a way. In one way, you're not, because if it depends on how COVID... Uh, it, it depends on how much you adhere to COVID rules, right? Because if I had a baby, I don't know how much I'd want my parents to stay away for months and months and months and months. I probably would have broken that, personally. Yeah, same. Um... But some people haven't, right? So that no. if you if you adhere to all the COVID rules, that really sucks. Having a baby, not being able to have like loved ones and close one like people near. But if you are a bit lax on that, because we've gone through so many tears at this point, this is like this is the worst tier we've been in. But before that, we've been in like t tears where you've been, been, been allowed to see people. We've been two, and stuff. we've been three, we've been full lockdown. Yeah. So like, if I was tier in a, a tier a two, I'd I'd love to have. People, you know, I would have done that. Well, um, we were in tier two, we had people over. That's what I mean, exactly. So, like, my point is, from a tier two perspective, having a baby, brilliant. Because your maternity leave or your paternity leave might have gotten extended in the sense that you're working remotely. Yeah. Um, so that's a blessing in its own right. Um, that was always going to be good for me, being self-employed. But Yeah, but it's, like, not brilliant for all the moms who were pregnant and had Shout to go alone moms. to like no definitely not 
Um, and in some places in England, they still have to go alone. So if you don't know this, um, if you're pregnant and going to get... So like when Rob got hurt, I went with him to the hospital. <laughs> when Rob got pregnant, when I Rob got pregnant. Uh, but when he got hurt, I went with him to the hospital and they were like, I waited in line. And then when they took him in, they're like, you have to leave because, like, you know, they don't let anybody go with you at this yeah. point. Some people wait outside. Yeah, I did not so do that. I'm not a good saying. enough partner. Um, <laughs> I went home. No, but, it's horrible but, out there. But like, but that also applies i mean it's changed in some places in england but that also applies to pregnant women can you imagine you're going through all your checkups and your partner is not allowed to be there it makes no sense because you live in most likely most likely are living in the same household um which means that in other places in other tiers you'd be allowed to go to like a pub together but you couldn't go to your Check you're up. in a bubble, and like, like it's the bubble rules, you know? you got to stick to the bubble rules. You can't say the bubble rules count and sometimes they don't count. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point in the bubble rules? I don't know, Caitlin. Like so many things in life, it's not fair. It's that misogynistic. A whole rant about pregnancy, and it I'm was. not pregnant. I'm sorry. Don't worry. I've got one solution for you. We were born to be alive. Rob's put the, uh, the star projector in another part of the room. It's really cool. Born to be alive. Born to be alive. Yes, we were. We were born to be alive. Do you want to know something weird? Yes, okay. of course. Always. Always. Tell me something weird, my darling. Okay. So we run an affiliate program and I'm always looking up like influencers, mommy bloggers, all these things. And um, YouTube's a fun place to spiral down into. And um, so I am currently looking at homeschool moms. Um, but... What? Doing what? <laughs> Homeschooling. Uh, but... I look at who these moms also follow and what they tend to follow, which is wild to me, is homesteading moms. So there's a whole homesteading movement on YouTube. Oh, Millions of followers. These I think I know what this is. Um, so what I gather is that it's not homeschooling per no, se. No, like no, they no, might no. also homeschool, but it's... Um, People who have decided to kind of revert back into like kind of farm living yeah. and lots of like preservative, yeah. like preserving things and growing things probably, by hand. Probably are a lot of preservatives. Yeah, but like, you know, like jams. preserving jams and lemons and, and whatnot. And like, there's just a whole thing about homesteading and all these moms follow it to be like a more... I'm know. more in touch with nature. Yeah, but I can see why it's been on the uptick, right? Like, because we've tried to start growing our own stuff and... And there will always be people who take anything anyone else is doing to the extreme. To the extreme, but they're marketing off of it. Like, they are benefiting from it. If you look, there's so many YouTubers that do homesteading. Homesteading is a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. It is characterised by subsistence agriculture, home preservation of food, and may also involve the small-scale production of textiles, clothing, and craft work for household use or sale. And um, it is wild. These people are... Pre it's funny because they're recording themselves which to me seems like the opposite because you think like Amish right his homesteads think like the ultimate homesteaders yes but unlike the Amish the homesteaders use up to the date technology including renewable energy options including solar and wind power um, so I think their thing is like making as little an impact like yeah. a carbon footprint as possible and being able to, to sustain their own means as much as possible themselves. I mean, I'm sure that you and I would go down a rabbit hole and find things we'd like that we would well, there's certain from things. Them. There's do certain things mean? we do that are, that are obviously along this way of thinking. Well, like for instance, we're making our own like scallion oil rather than going to buy it from or, somewhere getting or like, washing up powder. We're making our own detergent and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or toilet paper. What? <laughs> 
Where do you think those roles have been coming from, Caitlin? <laughs> Reusable. Uh, well, that's what some some mothers choose to have um, washable diapers. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to pass judgment on it. I do not know enough about it. You sound like the IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> Moors. Um, yeah, homesteading looks cool. Do you know about seasteading? Absolutely not. Much better than homesteading. Oh. Sorry. You'll see, though, why. Seasteading does not exist <laughs> on Wikipedia because I spelt it incorrectly. <laughs> Which is good. Why doesn't Wiki have like a did you mean function? Or is it just like... They need money. They're they're not going to give you the spell check version. They need money. Okay. Seasteading Mm. is the concept of creating permanent dwellings at sea Mm. called seasteads outside the territory claimed by any government. No taxes. Exactly. The term is a blend of sea and homesteading. Wow. Proponents say Steve says seasteads can provide the means for rapid innovation in voluntary governance and reverse environmental damage to our oceans and foster entrepreneurship. Sounds like they kind of added on. Some critics fear seasteads are designed more as a refuge for the wealthy to avoid taxes. Uh, yeah, no one's actually managed to make one actually be recognised <laughs> as a like actual state. Hilarious. Because the world's like, uh, that's just an oil rig that you've built a jacuzzi on, dude. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get out of the country. Yeah. Sorry, like, good for you that you can do that. Yeah. Love it. Love it. But Pay us taxes. Yeah, give us the taxes. Keep giving us the taxes. Um, Other things that are, like, really popular on YouTube? <laughs> Whoa! I think we've got a new segment. <laughs> Other things that are popular on YouTube. Wow. Master cleaners. Like moms who every day show deep cleans and how they organize their spaces. And these moms follow loads of these accounts. So it's like Marge. Yeah, but like on steroids. Oh no. If Marge had a YouTube. And so there's these homesteaders... And then there's these, like, deep clean. I deep clean the kitchen. And, and, like, billions of views and stuff. Like, it's ridiculous. They sound born to be alive. What's ridiculous about that? Um, The fact that... Why do you need 500 YouTubers explaining how to deep clean? Like, it's the same shit. They they cannot be reinventing the wheel the whole time. No, it's just because there's no limit on the amount of people that can YouTube, you know? There's a limit to To your your clean. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's much better. There's a limit to to YouTube. Yeah. You know what's interesting? That capture thing seems to work. Like, most encryption on the internet that doesn't work gets superseded by new encryption. But we've had it as a thing for, what, five years? Yeah. And it's still kind of the go-to. Still going strong. The bots can't read it. Your bots can't read it. Your bots it. can't read it. That's the problem. That's the problem or the solution. The bots try to read it. They go, well, what is it? They're like, we can't see it. I can't read I this. don't know how many palm trees are in these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> this picture looks like it's got a bit of palm tree coming in from the next picture. Does it count? <laughs> Dong. Oh, I've got yeah. a palm tree. It looks like a hand part palm tree in it. <laughs> You have tried too many times. Please come back later. No! no. <laughs> Caitlin, do you want to play how many tabs do you have open on your phone game? Oh, God, I have a lot. Okay, yeah. So go to your Safari, click that, Yeah. and you hold it, and it gives you the option. I have 185 tabs open. Oh, well, um, I got, like, 500. 500? <laughs> <laughs> You don't even use it. I don't use it. <laughs> Better keep these 500 tabs here. I know. The you first know one is, what is down. your ideal weight? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's have a look at some of these tabs. because I are don't fr- use Safari. You never use it. 500 tabs. 
<laughs> You've never used it as long as I've known. No, you only when it like default Chrome. opens. Is, it usually default opens from like Instagram or something, right? So, or if you need to reinstall, it will go to that before you get Chrome back on there. Yeah. Okay, let's let's find some random tabs. Okay, this I'll is just, fun. I'm just gonna scroll. We'll we'll we'll, f- we'll finish on this probably. Although this is good. Okay, one of these is um. Random tabs, random tabs, Aww. random tabs, random tabs. The British Theatre Guide, One Jewish Boy. What year? It's a review, uh, and this was the 2018 to 2019 run ah, at the old Red Lion Theatre. The Theater. original. Yes. Robert Newmark Jones was wildly out of control. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. There are strong performances from both curly-haired Robert Newmark Jones as emotional Jesse and Asha Reed as an Alex in whom you can often see common sense struggling with feeling. And Asha Reed, who also has curly hair, <laughs> just thought we mentioned everyone's hair. My hair, just so you know, short backsides, bit mum, part to the left. <laughs> okay, scrolling through, stop. Okay. Ooh, hq.blazepizza.com. Where is this? I am franchises up right now. Franchises available, so blazepizza.com. Um, mm-hmm. it, it appears to be a pizza place that sells cheesy bread. From where? Uh, where doesn't it? really say. They're in Alberta, Kentucky. God, nowhere in uh, London. Rhode Island. It's it's all, it's the states, and it's it's not all of them, but there are quite a few. Well, they have <laughs> they have a high rise dough which is a uh, vegetarian, a cauliflower crust which is gluten free, and a keto crust which is gluten free. Boring. Okay, yes, let's boring scroll. is the key word. Come and find a better tab. Do you have like the microphones and have the big arenas of, yeah, of church goers? Mega and, church. Mega, mega church, church equals money. Yeah, and um, there's this whole thing about. The, the shoes like so someone just like did pictures of all these people and they, sh- they did the shoes so that they wear so Ron Carpenter I don't know who he is but they showed these sneakers firstly they're wearing these like basketball like jacked up crazy designer sneakers that like maybe a rapper would wear who like has the you know has the swagger to wear it like has these are church people who are not wearing other like really cool clothes to I've, saying like okay i'm with you pause that for a second i found ron carpenter okay so this is ron carpenter so R- ron carpenter ministries download this week's message we could learn more there's a there's a daily we could receive yes. daily devotionals from him so, he looks quite he looks quite jacked to be a preacher doesn't he he has a tattoo but he's got a tattoo he's been working on his traps and his tries yeah. So you want to know what he's wearing? Um, yes. Okay. So he's wearing high top sneakers that are light blue um, and they're, they're Nike Airs. They're Jordan 1 Retro Highs, uh, University Blue and Off-White. So there's like a the base is white and then okay. there's a light yeah, blue. Sure. Um, this is the stuff they go for are into. the highest bid for them. No. $1,450 yeah. for yeah. a pair of fucking bid, bid. sneakers. Do you know why? Do you know why? Why? Because they make them in limited batches. But they're sneakers. Yes, but because they are very limited in their run, yeah. people who are sneakerheads, they yeah. sell it many years later. Okay, John Gray. Now look up John Gray. So the image credits are Preachers and Sneakers, by the okay. way. Oh. So that might be a funny account to look up. Preachers and Sneakers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These are often the same ministers who are like, God needs you to contribute. There we are. Oh, it's an Instagram. Of course. The Lord works in mysterious colorways. Um, so John Gray, he's wearing Air Yeezys 2, which the last time it sold, the pair of sneakers went for $3,721. Okay. What's your point? The, the hypocrisy. It's wild. Like, or, or are you still can't go over the fact that they cost a lot? Both. <laughs> the hypocrisy and the fact that sneakers cost a lot. No, but also, yeah, the hypocrisy because it's like... Jesus! <laughs> okay, I found another tab. I don't know what this is, but we're, we're deep in this episode. Why not just carry on with our tabs? <laughs> this is where we are. Dora Ratchin. What? Um, 20th November 1918 to 22nd of April 2008 born oh 
Heinrich Ratjen, born Dora Ratjen, was a German athlete who completed for Germany in the women's high jump at the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, finishing fourth, but was later determined to be male and or intersex. And or intersex. I mean, that's very different, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I wonder how much uh, they probably... examination they did. Wow. This, is this like one of the earliest trans athletes? I think we were looking up like trans people and um, in, the Olympics. in the Olympics. And we were also looking. I think, we I think when well. like, what's her name? Yusemia? Yusemna? Casta Semenya. Casta Semenya. She's intersex. Yeah, but I think this is around the time that, that she was in the news and we were looking for other examples of it. I'm pretty sure that's why. Yeah, you're right. This up. In fact, Costa Semenya is in the next um, tab. So tab. there you go. Yeah, so we were just looking up. Where like, she lost that case. That was a disgrace. That was a disgrace. And that was the thing where, like, well, and or intersex, firstly. <laughs> like, and, and secondly, I think that there's, there's just a fine line. Well, it shouldn't be. You shouldn't be ruled illegal just by the Being hormones right. your body naturally produ produces. Yeah. That's not fair. Because, like, Michael Phelps yeah. naturally has a larger wingspan yeah. than other people. Like, exactly. it's longer than his height. And that why and he was worked, he allowed to he have He worked on it, but, but no matter how much he worked on it, there was, like, a physical bone structure that he couldn't make bigger that gave him a huge advantage yeah and like she and then and she was disqualified it just doesn't make because any sense because her body naturally produces more testosterone but it's always been that way and over time it would have made her legs because it bone it, it condensed how strong a bone is testosterone does that yeah oh. so if you if your body's been producing over time she'll have been a better runner because of it but that's not her fault no. You shouldn't ban her because of it. Yeah, so that's one of our tabs. I just remember that was when that These scandal... These tabs are good. <laughs> My 500 Safari tabs. I never opened Safari, by the way. You're listening to Tab Talk, where tabs come to talk. Ooh, daily horoscope. Let's see. Vice. So this was your horoscope for what day? February 18th, 2019. I'm going to read Taurus Ooh, first. How was 18th? February 20th. All right, we're going back to... 2019? Mm-hmm. February 18th. I can tell you that it was a weekend. Okay. Um, I had just been teaching at the NFTS. I had two children I'd been tutoring had been given first places into their school. Mm. And about a month before, we'd been offered one Jewish boy at the Trafalgar. Oh, so that's when it was starting. So it's the very first starting of it. Okay, so here is your horoscope. You ready? Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Robert is a Taurus. Taurus, he's so stubborn, the bull. I don't know. <laughs> well, like Surprises arrive today and your ruling planet Venus connects with Saturn, bringing you solid social connections. Pisces season starts today, finding you reflecting on your hopes and dreams for the future. And they came. Yeah. Can we look up my horoscope on the day Wondrous Boy was shut down? Mm. And then we'll do your horoscope for, for then and now as well. Okay. Okay, so a year ago it was pretty accurate. It was pretty much predicting that life was on the up and up. I mean, my God, that year I was getting married, mm. you know. It was, a, it was a significant year of my life. I had Mikva as well. It was an artistically successful year, and the stars knew it. And I, I can see stars now. Let's see if the stars knew what happened on the day shutdown happened. Uh, so it would have been the, the ninth. Oh, no, that's not right. Taurus. Okay, fine. A climax takes place in your love life. And a creative project you've been working on, thanks to the full moon in Virgo. Well, that is a climax, isn't it? We had press night, yeah. Mercury ends its retrograde, moving conversations about your career and reputation forward. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a week later when the show had been closed for a whole. Okay. Communication planet Mercury enters Pisces, which bodes well for your social life. Travel is also on your mind as the moon enters fellow Earth sign Capricorn. Makes no sense. <laughs> That's a load of bollocks. Okay, it got COVID. Yeah. All right, let's do your dates. The bliss of oh, the obvious. 
Gemini. Mm. Exciting meetings take place today, Gemini. Mm. Intriguing conversations concerning shared resources also take place. The sun enters Pisces, finding you stepping into the spotlight. The moon in Leo connects with lucky Jupiter, bringing good vibes to your relationship. Mm. Wow. A couple of months later, you married me, so. <laughs> right. How do I change date? I remember what I was doing on the last day. I went to your last show. You were gonna, I was going to come to your last you show. You were going to come to the last show. Right. So I came to the show before and then I was like, I got all dressed up and I because I kind of knew something was in the air and I was going to make it a really great night out because, yes. uh, and I kept saying like something's coming up. But, yes. Yeah. And you almost came in be- because they only cancelled pretty last minute. Mm-hmm. And I think you were basically ready to come in. And you said, Caitlin, don't come in. And yeah, I, and I, I got really don't. dressed up because I was going to take him out on the town because I just had a sense of doom. You know when you have that feeling, you're like, something's about to happen. And I was like, at least we'll get to like like live in the moment. And I, I, w- I got really, really dressed to the nines. And he was like, don't come. And then nope. was like, went to the last pub you were allowed to go to. Yep. Um, and on the Strand with a load of other musos and actors and performers who were like, it's over, man. Yeah. You could feel it in the air. Yeah. So this day, Gemini, March 9th, 2020. The full moon in Virgo brings a major emotional release to an issue that's been brewing at home and in the family. Your ruling planet Mercury ends its retrograde, Mm -hmm. helping you see the big picture. This one's long. (laughs) (laughs) The moon in Virgo makes a helpful connection with the energetic Mars at 6.48am. A climax is reached with the full moon in Virgo at 1.48pm. Pisces season can be confusing. Didn't read any of this. But Virgo <laughs> vibes are all about clarity and organization, and the light of the full moon will illuminate important information. And okay, so that kind of made sense. It made sense because um, I, as a as a fortune. So the for time you. I got to see you, I went by myself and I had Pizza Express by myself, which is not my favorite pizza place. But I was like, but also not your least favorite. Not my least favorite because uh, I do gluten free. But um. I remember being really proud and excited for you, but it also felt weird because of all the stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, okay, it's really big because he's on the West End. So it was like like focusing on that. And then we got to see that. It was really great. And like, that was beautiful. And then I saw you twice, actually. And then Born to be alive. Born to be alive. I was going to see you a third time. And then, Mm -hmm. and then that was, uh, that was when you said not to come. And then COVID, yeah. we didn't think we'd be here almost a year later. We were like three months away from a year later. Yep. Uh, Caitlin, yes? this is called the bliss of the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring us down. I, right. I can't help if it's just the abyss. <laughs> I know. There's, parts, there's abyss to the bliss. Yes. Sometimes you have to swim around in the abyss before you find nuggets of bliss. Well, it's really funny. <laughs> Okay, no fake bliss. <laughs> Back to the abyss with you. Yeah, but if you keep, if you laugh, you can start actually like really laughing. Well, yeah, you can do fake, <laughs> fake laugh into real laugh. Got that. It all started with a kiss. He didn't even kiss me. Oh. <laughs> What do you mean I didn't even kiss you? Mm. On mic or ever? <laughs> <laughs> ever. Um, okay, and what was the third one I was looking up? Third date? Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Shit. I know. It was in March as well, was it? No, it's 16th, March 16th. Yes, a week after lockdown. <laughs> Love an ad. <laughs> Love an ad. Started with a kiss. Let go of the bathroom. 
ready for your horoscope? Yeah. March 16th, 2020. Your ruling planet Mercury enters Pisces, bringing news about your career and moving conversations that were delayed forwards. The moon enters Capricorn, encouraging you to leave the past where it belongs and settle a debt. Mm. Promise me to be your wife. <laughs> yeah, but you're only eight. And I just turned 36. The, I'm not sure that's the original, is it? <laughs> um, that makes sense, except it was a bit delayed or early, that horoscope. It's not the best horoscope, is it? No, but like... Do they do future horoscopes? Yes, um, but I don't want to go through Vice because it, you know... helen has been spending a lot of time at Breitpart.com. Mm. <laughs> Stop I... the steal! Stop the <laughs> steal! Would you like to know your zodiac characteristic um, or no. your Chinese yearly or... No. Hold on. I, do they tell it for the future? Zodiac yearly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Twice. So, can I, can I go to 2023? This is 2021. Can I go to 2023? This is 2021. Is that a yes or a no? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess, I mean, 2020 is very nearly over. If you were to think, Taurus, of all the signs in the Zodiac as a house... <laughs> go on. No, I mean, go on, as, as uh, I play. <laughs> <laughs> then Taurus... No, sorry, start again, though. I will listen, I promise, this time. Taurus. I promise. 2021, alias the bull. If you were to think of all the signs of the Zodiac as a house, then Taurus would certainly be the foundation. You were the very definition of stability, consistency, and security. You often serve as a source of strength and support for the people in your personal life and in your career. You are an anchor upon which everyone can clearly rely on even in the stormiest of seas of life. People have confidence in you because of the aura of stability that you exude. This year, you should find yourself the centre of attention whenever a situation arises where others are jacking faith in themselves. Why does it say that? Jacking faith in themselves? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Or in their circumstances, so a source of strength is needed at this time. This may apply in your home and with your family, but it could just as easily apply to work or community-related situations. Your down-to-earth nature makes it obvious that yours is an earth sign. You are easily approachable, even when you are in a gruff mood. Yeah. <laughs> because your integrity and dependability are always coming first. And with your intelligence and your dedication, whatever you choose to become involved in, you are a go-to source for problem solving. One of your less desirable traits, though, mm. is your penchant for being rather stubborn. Speed it on. <laughs> you are not a quitter. So you sometimes go beyond where you should just... To prove your point. Try to work on that tendency this year so that you can take advantage of opportunities. Oh, there's more. Like, you can do love and family. Should we read love or career? Uh, I'll do one for you. How about mm -hmm. that? Okay. Okay. The love one was nice, but like, we don't need to blow your... Your zodiac yearly, Gemini. Mm. Alias, the twins. The twins. Which Gemini are you today? Are you the charming soul who loves to be the life of the party, exuding style, class and wit, while being the smart and savvy conversationalist who exudes optimism? Or are you the quiet character who is simply fine, keeping your own company, hiding away from the world, while you work on brilliant ideas that suit your dynamic ability to make things happen? Yeah. Actually, Gemini, you are both. Oh. Shit. Your sign is symbolised by the twins, 
and you are studying contrasts, you easily flip from one persona to the other and back again. But no matter which of your personalities emerges on any given day, you're always an interesting individual with big dreams and the ability to make them come true. And in 2021, you could possibly start working towards accomplishing one or two of your biggest dreams. While others may scoff at some of the extraordinary goals you've set yourself, and even if the odds seem against you, with perseverance and your perennial upbeat attitude, you can reach your mark this year. Wow. Anton started singing next door, so he's testifying. (laughs) It continues, your innate ability to blend in with different groups of people will also help advance your goals this year. For you may find yourself working with a rather diverse selection of people. You are likeable because you can talk to anyone. And you find compelling and humorous things to say that anyone would find interesting. This ability will endure you to others, allowing you to forge bonds with influential people. And those who know influential people will introduce you to them. Wow. Congrats on 2021. Wow, it didn't say anything negative. Why? <laughs> I don't know. There's enough shit going on. You They're like, you, why'd you get a negative thing? I didn't get any negative thing. Mine was like, by the way, 2021 could suck, but good luck. <laughs> and with that, we have the bliss of the abyss for Kaitalina. <laughs> Kaitalina. Yeah, you, you, did, you did get some bliss in your abyss this yeah, year. Yeah, my 2021 gonna rock. Yeah. Mm, you come along on the ride, daddy O. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming now. I need surgery first. Yeah. And then to meet Fred Durst. To be fair, my, my 2021 surely has to be starting super low. Yeah. <laughs> Knee surgery basically first thing. Yeah. COVID still a thing. Yeah. So those first few weeks, not going to be great. But the only way is up, to quote Yaz and the Plastic People. And the Plastic People. You know that song? No. Yes, you do. Maybe. Very concerned at the video, but worried about life, about how she fits in in 2021. After an excellent horoscope, Yaz and the Plastic People singing The Only Way Is Up has knocked her, ladies and gentlemen, it's knocked her. The only way can't be up. The only, <laughs> the only way is up. No, but the only way can't be up. No, the only way is up. There's lots of ways to go. Well, okay. Try this, okay? Try facing the way you're facing now. Yeah. Now going up. You can do it, okay? Now try turning. Yeah, that was going up. Yeah, and now try going up some more. Yep, see? See? The only way is up. There we go. Okay, but I can also just fall back and go down. (laughs) But when you think about it, going down is the same as going up. Mm. That has been my TED Talk. No, not. It was the bliss of the abyss. No. 
Yes. I thought I'm going to rebrand as the Ted of the talk. No, 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 you get sued. No, do you think that's different enough? No, 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 not enough. What about the talk of the Ted? It's like the talk of the town, but it's one guy called Ted going, you got to listen to this show. It's great. What about the dead talk? The dead talk. Then you interview spirits. Here's my dead talk. And then you talk to like people who don't exist anymore. They're gone. You mean I do some weird podcast where I interview the dead? Yeah, that's not weird. I'd listen to that. <laughs> it is weird. Who, how am I going to interview the dead? You don't hear them all the time. No, how am I going to translate what they say to me? They'll write it in the, in the star projector. <laughs> all right, let's see if this works. Hello, Ram. It is a the theme. A humble thank these are the voyages of the starship in the press. It's a mission. What was that? <laughs> Why was it so scary? Hello, Rab. Send out. Hello, Rab. It is a Gazim. A humble thanks. These are the voyages of the starship in the hair press. It's a mission. Fagor old dreams. Okay, I wrote full English sentences. Okay, I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky we haven't ended hour two, because that's when we do a shot every five minutes. <laughs> you weren't aware of how this show lasted? <laughs> well, we have done a lot longer than I thought we were going Tired. to. Four hours 31. <laughs> no. Congratulations. <laughs> Corner Culinary Caitlin. <laughs> hey. We have um, a duck yeah. oil, duck fat to deal with. We haven't confit it yet. Cook me in duck fat, I baby. I cooked a duck. Duck. Calamity duck for Halloween. <laughs> Freeze me in duck fat. That'll be a nice cube in your boiling hot beef. All right. The time to is the time is now. It's time to go. <laughs> I'm done with speaking on the phone. Okay, before we go, one last words of wisdom. Hello, Rab. It is a Gazim, a humble text. <laughs> one of the words I told her to say was me. <laughs> she got that wrong. Hello, uh, Rab. <laughs> that V is killer. I'll give her that. She's nailed that bit. Oh, the covers hit my, hit my temples. My temples. <laughs> okay, we'll go out on one last video. Finally, I'm on a podcast with Bean, and I really just mean that I'm done doing podcasts. I'm not. I like it. It's fun. Having wine tours and tasting, vineyard tours, seminars, arts and crafts. It's a lot of fun. A whole day. Stop. Oh, 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 oh
I guess I will talk to you tomorrow and have a good night. Talk to you then. Bye.